All right, everyone. It's been a while since I did an abandoned mine video, so I got my buddy Brian here with me. We got our safety equipment, and more importantly, we have an abandoned mine to check out. So I only heard rumors about this place. I don't know anything about it. Maybe we'll discover something once we're down there, but it is a pretty steep slope. And from my guess, I would say it's probably a ventilation shaft but it is snowing out and it's around 20 degrees right now. So we're gonna get our gear ready to go, head inside and take you along with me. So come along with us. Okay, so quick update, we may be trapped here um, just because in front of us is a giant sheet of ice and from what it looks like the tunnel here slits off to the left and right. The right might be collapsed. The left seems like it keeps going. But this is all solid ice. Yeah, we're on a pretty steep slope here. If we had uh, some better gear to climb back up, which right now we don't. So we're going to um, kind of assess the situation here and might have to come at a later date. So, Okay, so this is going to be... Uh, a failed attempt today. We didn't realize that there is this much ice down here and we don't have the proper gear. We don't have spikes for our boots and we do have a rope but there's nothing to tie it off to once we're down here. So unfortunately we'd be able to make it down but there'd be no way to make it back out. It's just solid ice. So we're going to have to make a return trip once this melts and uh, it looks like it does go off in a distance so I am intrigued and curious to see where it goes to but we'll have to be a part two. So once we get to top I'll wrap up the video, but unfortunately, it didn't work out today. All right, so it just goes to show that not everything goes according to plan, man. This is one of those times where we had a great idea and we're all geared up, but the conditions inside just really weren't favorable. So we hope to return as soon as the weather is uh, better for the melting of the ice once it gets a bit warmer. So anyways, if you enjoyed this short, but Unfortunate, not working out video. Give it a thumbs up, at least we tried. Otherwise, any questions or comments, leave them down below. And most importantly, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. Thanks for watching, and as always, I'll see you in the next video. All right, everyone, welcome back with the magic of editing. We've progressed a few months ahead and we've had much warmer weather now, so what we originally proclaimed as the ice mine should be nice and thawed out and melted now. The only thing I didn't show you last time though is this large waste rock pile. Not huge, but large enough to be noticeable. And right down here is the hole. So we're gonna get geared up. Brian's with me again, and we're gonna hopefully show you what's the bottom of that mine. So we'll see you on the inside. So we're tying ourselves off with the ropes. We have something to hold on to while we descend and ascend out of the mine. All right, so Brian's making his way down there and he said there's still a little bit of ice left, but nothing like it was last time. So we can definitely make it past it this time. All right, this is as far as we made it last time. As you can see, there is some ice left behind, but not like it was last time. We could definitely make it, but we've had weeks of warm weather in the 70s, 60s and 70s, and still lingering on, but that's because down here, it's always in the 50s, so. If we came any sooner, though, might not be able to pass it. But let's keep moving forward. 
So down here we have some timbers and I believe some railroad ties for ore car tracks. And we have a loose top here. You can see it's cracked and fractured in different areas. And it looks like it may continue off that way too. But we're gonna go this way first. That's definitely not a good sign. Uh, there's a little cavity there. Little tiny stalls and timbers. This is pretty cool. You can see the drill. A hole right there. Rock. Oh yeah. It looks like it keeps going a little bit back there. It goes back pretty far. Might not be able to see it on camera, but that goes as far as I could see. There's the coal vein right there. It goes off in that direction as well. That's literally crawling on your hands and knees and stomach to get back there. I always laugh at these little tiny timbers, they don't really do much for holding up the top. I think it might possibly go off in that direction. And here's some gobbing here of waste rock. Are you able to crawl up here to see if it goes off at all? Yeah, it doesn't go too far. It just basically goes to the side that we were just looking at. Okay. There's the cold thing right there. Probably got two feet or so. Little vein. And here's more of the coal vein over here too. Yeah, like he said roughly two feet. And that's all they mine out. They don't mine any other material because it's just wasting resources and money. So however tall the coal vein is, that's how big the chamber is. So all this right here that we're looking at would have been coal at one point. So they obviously excavated it out, working their way in, but that's why it's only you know, as big as it is because that's where the coal was. They basically just chased the coal, chased the vein. I'm gonna give you a little bit of a look up here. Hopefully you can see it on camera, but it does go quite a ways back. I'd say at least 50 feet. That's as far as I could see. There's a little section there. It looks like they left a pillar there and it goes around the corner there. Right around there. So nothing too extensive, but still need to see. And there's all fragments of coal and rock and material here. It's definitely cramped corners though, I'll tell you that. So now we're going to go back towards where we came in here, where the shaft is, and we're going to veer to the left now. And it looks like they may have had possibly ore car tracks here, it's hard to tell. These might be fallen stalls or timbers, but some of them are laying horizontal like for a rail bed.
this may have been even a shoot at one point too. But you can see that the top is squeezing. We've got good airflow down here, which is good. So we don't have to worry about that. It's a good thing we're in a hard hat too, because I keep bumping my head. So right in front of us here is a large slab. Obviously it fell down from the top. It looks like it keeps going a little bit. Is it fractured? Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of sketchy right there. Yeah. If you can't tell, there's a... Stick your hand up there so they can see, like, there was a gap there. Okay. Yeah, you can see his... As far as I can see. Now, how much farther he's going is... I'm going to try and determine that. <laughs> I think they had ore car tracks there. Oh yeah. It goes a little ways. Does it keep going or does it stop back there? Yeah, it keeps going. Does it? Okay, so just up there is where I was standing, showing you the direction behind me. We determined it's pretty safe to keep moving because even though it's fractured, it's one solid piece that's laying on the ground there and laying up here on this pillar and right there. So it's not going to fall any more than what it is. You see the remnants of the railroad tracks down here? There's a little worked out area. Give me my flashlight and show you. It's echoing here too, which means it's very solid material. So, so far so good. Got some gobbing right there. Some stalls. They're walking in water. As you can see past Brian, it does keep going and it's actually going uphill a little bit, which is quite interesting. And they did the natural support timbers down here and with the uh, pillars of the coal, they left those there so that they could help support the ceiling. There's all these little stoped out areas. Again, this is just big enough for the coal vein, and I'll show you my hand against it. So, roughly two, two and a half feet. This is actually bigger than I thought because we talked to someone who's been down here, they said, and they said it doesn't go very far, but this is still moving. If you guys are curious too, I'm using my new flashlight, it's a Through Night TC20. And I'll be doing a review on this pretty soon. This is bigger than what he said. So if you can tell now, 
after bottoming out, we're going up a slight incline now. And definitely had rail ties here. I'm sorry, rail tracks at one point. You can see the railroad ties. And this is opening up quite nicely. Got some stalactites starting to form. And here is the vein of coal. They didn't excavate this part of it. You can see how shiny it is. Sounds like we've got a small waterfall up here. These are neat little areas too because there's like a little mezzanine there and then the worked out area. So a lot of different features down here. Ninety-three. Something funny right here. That's like the smallest of all pillars. It's about a one foot diameter. Got some nails here. Looks like they had wire running down here at one point, maybe for electricity. Is that maybe part of a dynamite box? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. some braided cable down here. They have a lot more gobbing here, which is pretty common among these mines. As I mentioned in previous videos and even earlier, gobbing serves two purposes. One, it gets rid of waste materials instead of having to haul it all the way out to the surface. 
It also serves as a type of pillar to help support the ceiling, the top. A lot of water coming in. As you can see, we're not the first one to be back here either. It's garbage. So what we're looking at here is potentially the face here. This is where they would have stopped working. As Ryan mentioned, the coal seam kind of pinches off almost to nothing. So they most likely stopped working here. There is what looks like to be some backfill or maybe a slight collapse area from the top, but there's no signs of it going any further than here. And just a little, you can even see the size of the vein here. It's probably a foot or less here. Yeah, there's the coal back there. That's maybe a foot at most. Okay, so it looks like we reached the end of the mine here. As I mentioned earlier, we were informed that this mine wasn't very big. Compared to other ones I filmed in the past, it's not very big, but it's larger, larger than I was anticipating. I thought it was only gonna go a few hundred feet, and we probably went a couple hundred yards. The first direction we went didn't split out too far. It kind of pinched off, and there's little stoked out cavity areas, and they were just too small to crawl through, not really worth it. They only went horizontal. If they went down or up, it would have meant they went to other workings, other levels. They kind of just went horizontal, so it would have basically terminated farther back. The drift runner right now, though, is much larger. It was kind of unique because it went, we came down a slope, leveled out, and went up a slight incline. And then it looks like it just pinched off there, and that was the face of it there. So no more car tracks, and no items left down here except for some braided cable and timbers and possibly remnants of a TNT box. But other than that, a pretty basic ordinary mine, but it's something that we got to document and to share with you guys. So we're going to make our way back out now. If we do happen to find anything along the way that I missed, I will share it with you. Otherwise, once I get out to the surface, I will wrap up the video there. So stay tuned and we'll be right back. So one thing I wanted to demonstrate really quick too is on my new camera here, the Panasonic I'm using. It has infrared night vision. So not only does it give it that cool green hue, but it allows you to see much more detail. So if you guys like this type of element in a video, and I could maybe do more of it, let me know in the comment section. It's pretty neat. I've never used it before. And you can see how it makes me look. It looks like I'm in a ghost hunting channel, but this is complete darkness now. There's no lights on at all just the IR light that's illuminating me and allowing it to pick it up. So pretty cool technology. I'm looking forward to doing more with this type of element of infrared. So maybe some ghost hunts, maybe some abandoned explorations where we could keep the lights off or keep them low and just use this. So pretty cool. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. Now one thing I missed on the way up here, it looks like this is almost like a type of gate or doorway or something. Can't be for certain, but it does resemble that. Maybe even like a little fence. So it looks like something that definitely would have blocked off an area. But we're making our way back down the slight incline that we came up. And once we see some daylight, I'll pick back up there with the video. Okay, so that's where we just returned from. We made it past the 
sketchy fractured top area and we have daylight. Turn off the lights here, you can see. So, there's the proverbial light at the end of the tunnel. All right guys, that's gonna do it for this video. As you can see, we made it out without any issues. First, I wanna stress not to do this on your own or to even attempt to do it. It is very dangerous. Coal mines especially do have a lot of dangers with black damp, methane, and bad oxygen levels. And you not, don't wanna go down there unless you have someone that's experienced and more importantly, had the proper safety gear. We had everything we needed to, be, to do this safely and the air levels were good. It's not a huge mine compared to other ones I've been into, but it was bigger than what we were explained to, but we got to check it out and to share it with you guys. But again, don't attempt to do this yourself. We did this together. We do have experience with this and I wouldn't ever encourage anyone to do this on your own. Even though it does look cool, it is very dangerous, much more than you can actually realize. On top of that, coal mines especially have a lot more dangers than hard rock mines out west, such as gold mines and um, quartz mines, other stuff like that, even caves. So coal mines especially are dangerous, but again, we take the proper precautions. The other thing too is that fractured area that we saw, it's something you typically never want to go under. That is potentially a loose top that could fall, even from the vibrations from your voice. We did study the area and we saw that it was resting on both sides of the drift, so there's no way for it to fall any further than what it did. But typically you don't want to go down one of those or go underneath one of those because you might not make it back out. So if you guys have any comments, questions, or thoughts, leave it down below. I know this wasn't a very exciting mine, but again, it is a piece of history. I'm sure all of us out there can relate to someone that knows someone that was at least one way or another tied into coal mining, whether it was being a coal miner themselves, working in a colliery, pulling railroad cars full of coal cars, stuff like that. So it's something I enjoy sharing with you guys and hopefully you do as well. If you did enjoy this adventure, drop a like down below. Don't forget you follow me on Facebook where I do share photos and information and details about my adventures. And lastly, I just wanted to thank you for watching. And like I always say, I'll see you in the next video. Take care.